What's up Inter gang, welcome back to Semple Inter TV bringing you the match review of our 1-0 win against Udinese. Let's go! The way the match played out was all too familiar for Inter fans. Inter dominating the play because Udinese letting them have the ball and then Udinese gambling on having one or two chances on the counter which they did in the second half and luckily enough they didn't score from them. Inter struggling to create chances to break down these walls uh, but in the end Thank you VAR, finally on our side, doing his job properly, identifying Seco Fofana's handball um, and Mauro Cardi converting a penalty for the little Panenka Cucchiaio, as they call it in Italy. So let's get straight into the player ratings given out by Semper Inter as always by our boy Sunit. In goal, Handanovic given a 6, uh, hardly had anything to do in the match. Um, could have, yeah, could have been reading a book if he wanted to. A left back, Quadwazamoa, returning to a good performance now after a few shaky performances recently. 6.5, I agree. Centre back partnership, always on lockdown these days. Skriniar de Vrij, probably uh, one of the best partnerships in Europe, I would say now. Absolute tanks, absolute wars. Um, I would have rated uh, de Vrij slightly higher actually than Skriniar. Uh, just because screen is always slightly higher rated than uh, De Vrij, I like to balance it out because I felt like De Vrij had a lot more to do in this match as uh, Posito and De Paul will, uh, were more um, moving around his side more than Skriniar's side. Um, and then he also had to move into the centre of a three at the end um, and he marshalled the, marshalled the defence really well from there. Seema Vrishaliko 7.5, uh, I agree, he was given sort of man of the match and he was um, a constant um, option on that right hand side, um, great engine on him, finally seems to be returning to uh, to good physical form as he's been struggling with injuries ever since he's come back uh, from uh, from the World Cup. Um, his crossing quality is there for us all to see, um, especially when we compare it to someone like Danilo D'Ambrosio. Um, so well deserved for Sima Vershalko, hopefully he retains his place in the team. Moving on to midfield, Borja Valero uh, retained his place in midfield after some good performances of late. However, this match has seemed like uh, his old age caught up with him again. Um, he didn't look as fresh as he has been looking recently um, and actually made a few mistakes on the ball, which is very unlike him. And he was uh, subbed off in the, early on in the second half, um, deservedly. Next to him, Marcelo Brozovic, uh, given a six. He was a bit shaky as well at times. He gave the way the ball stupidly in defence. Um, we could have been punished if it was a higher quality opponent, so we were lucky there. And um, he's played pretty much every single match this season, so you can see that physically he's not at 100% and he needs, he needs some rest. But we just don't have another option in midfield and he just has to soldier on, which he's doing. And the third midfielder, Jean Mario, who seems to have uh, you know, secured that third midfield spot on a permanent basis now, ahead of uh, Gagliardini. Um, and I believe quite rightly so, um, the quality that he brings to the match um, is something that no one else in the squad can bring. Some of the positions that he takes up on the wing uh, and the way he retains the ball with, the, with his shielding is really good. Yeah, sometimes he gets muscled really easily, uh, but the way he gets out of tight situations is um, you know, something that none of our midfielders can do. Politano 6.5, I agree, as always, very busy and very industrious. Didn't seem to quite have the final product uh, yesterday, but um, still very important player for our match. Up front, the captain Mauricardi with the all-important winning goal, kept a cool head. Um, his, his style of play has completely changed this, this season, so props to Spalletti for that. A lot of people have been criticising Mauricardi last few matches because he has been lingering more outside the box than being inside. But that's just sort of the trade-off that you have you have to make. Um, if you if you want him to drop deeper, it's harder for him to make those late runs into the box. Um, you know he has to conserve his energy. On the left, Keita Balde finally starts ahead of even Perisic. Perisic must have finally lead that sex tape that he has on Spalletti because uh, he's finally finally been dropped from the team. Um, and Keita Balde didn't do too bad. Um, I think he deserves his rating. Could have been a bit higher because he could have had the assist for Mau Mauricardi, which uh, he didn't tuck in, um, very surprisingly so. And he also had a decent shot in the first half, but he needs more game time and hopefully um, he gets more regular game time with the team so he can integrate himself because he still doesn't feel like he's part of the team. Moving on to the substitutes, Lautaro, Bola, you know, 
This guy always brings on loads of energy. Perisic was brought on in the second half for Keita. Uh, he also had a, one decent cross uh, that could have been uh, could have created a goal. Um, but apart from that, didn't really do that much. Had to play as a wing back uh, once again, uh, which seems to be a recurring theme now. I think uh, in the future we might see that becoming his uh, his long term position. Also, Rajan Angolan was on the substitutes. He was returned to the team, which will be good news for Spalletti uh, and the squad because we, we really need Rajan Angolan back at 100%. Hope he's passed all these injuries. I hope uh, he, he's, he's not rushed back into the team, you know, even against Kiev in the next match. I hope he's not forced to start. Um, let's give him some time to fully recover. Moving on to our bold headed coach, Lucian Spalletti. He was given a five. Uh, which I think is a bit harsh. Um, I don't know what more he could have done. The problems that we saw in this match, we've been seeing for many, many years now. I wanted to uh, single out uh, Rodrigo De Paul, or De Paul from Udinese's team. The guy is a baller. He's a certified baller. You can see why a lot of teams want him. You can see why it, we've been linked with him. Um, created pretty much everything that Udinese had in terms of goal scoring chances. He's the advanced playmaker and um, I don't see him staying at Udinese much longer. Uh, same thing goes for Fofana. Moving on to our next match, which is against Kievo Verona in Verona. It's on Saturday, 5 p.m. UK time. Very, very important match, uh, must win match because Kiev are there for the taking. They've been, uh, they've been struggling the whole season. You know, they've hardly got any points. Uh, they had Ventura come in and now they've got a new coach. Uh, they had the points deduction. If Spalletti truly has made mentality changes, then this team will be able to beat this Kiva Verona team wherever they throw at them. So let's look at what some of you guys have been saying on social media because I just love seeing what you guys say on our sort of separate inter social media accounts. Uh, let's go on Twitter. We've got at Valen7 who says Jao Mario is a baller. He deserves a seven. Um, seven might be a bit too, uh, a bit too uh, generous, but definitely Jao Mario is a baller. Uh, technically, I think he is the best midfielder we have. Um, he just hasn't been able to show on a consistent basis. Mr. Eden Dassidi, one of the uh, Semper Inter crew, uh, says uh, Voschalko, very underrated, went from one of the worst crosses in La Liga uh, to one of the best here in Serie A. I agree, um, showing, uh, showing a lot of improvement, Voschalko. Um, and shout out to Eden Dassidi for starting an uh, Inter club in Nigeria. Shout out to my Niger boys. So that's it for this week, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Um, comment below what you think of the match, what you think of our next match, the match predictions. Uh, and as always, Porta Inter. Let's go.